of The Walking Dead. Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. So The Walking Dead was on for 11 seasons and now a new spinoff series, Dead City, is about to start. And by the way, subscribe to Screen Crush because we're going to be covering every episode of that series. So The Walking Dead continues in multiple spinoffs, so we're going to recap everything from the main show so far. Sheriff Deputy Rick Grimes and his partner Shane Walsh are pursuing a criminal when Rick gets shot and falls into a coma. During his coma, the zombie apocalypse happens. His partner Shane attempts to get him out of the hospital, but the military show up and they are not just killing zombies, or should I say, walkers. The military are also gunning down human beings before they have a chance to turn into walkers. Shane pushes a hospital bed in front of Rick's door and then he leaves together Rick's wife Lori and his son Carl and get them to safety. A few weeks later, Rick wakes up from his coma and discovers that the world has ended. Rick then meets fan favorite character Morgan and his son Dwayne. Morgan explains to Rick everything that's happened and tells him about the walkers. But you know about the dead people, right? Yeah, I saw a lot of that. Rick and Morgan eventually go their separate ways, and Rick makes his way to Atlanta in search of his family. Once he arrives, he meets a group of survivors, including Glenn, T-Dog, Merle, Morales, and Andrea. Merle is giving the group some trouble, so Rick sets him straight and handcuffs him to the roof of a building. Mm. The building is surrounded by walkers, and Rick helps the group escape and gets back to their camp on the outskirts of Atlanta. When Rick and his new friends arrive back at the camp, Rick is reunited with his family and his partner Shane. Now, Lori and Shane thought that Rick was dead, so they have been hooking up in the woods. So now, Rick being back makes things a little awkward. We also meet sweaty heartthrob Daryl Dixon, who's pissed off that his brother Merle was left handcuffed on a roof. So, they all go back to Atlanta to get Merle, but when they get to the rooftop, they find Merle's severed hand, but Merle is nowhere to be found. When they return to the camp, they find it overrun with walkers. Rick and the gang show up just in time to help them fight off, but there are casualties, including Andrea's sister, Amy. After regrouping following the Walker attack, the group heads for the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, but Morales and his family decide to go their own way. Rick and the group arrive at the CDC, where they meet Dr. Jenner, the only surviving scientist at the agency. He explains to the survivors how the zombie virus works. Frontal lobes, the neocortex, the human part, that doesn't come back. The you part. Jenner also reveals that he has given up on any hope. The CDC is set to self-destruct, and Jenner is not going to let Rick and the group leave because he insists that this is easier and a better way out. Rick convinces Jenner to open the doors, and they escape just in time before the entire facility explodes. But before Rick leaves, Jenner whispers a secret in Rick's ear, and we as the audience don't learn this secret until the season two finale that everyone is actually infected. Even if you die by natural causes, you will resurrect as a walker. After leaving the CDC, we see the group head for a military base called Fort Benning. Along the way, Carol's daughter Sophia gets separated from the group, and while searching for her, Carl is inadvertently shot by a hunter named Otis. Otis takes them back to the farm where he lives, where we meet Herschel, a veterinarian who can save Carl's life, but he needs special surgical equipment from town. Shane and Otis go for supplies, but they get caught up by some zombies, so Shane makes the difficult decision to shoot Otis in the leg so he'll be a walker bait, allowing Shane to make it back to the farm with the supplies that he needs to save Carl's life. So this is the final straw for Shane's tilt to the dark side. His lust for Lori and leadership of the group reaches a boiling point, and he becomes a constant thorn in Rick's side as he becomes the antagonist for season two. Herschel reluctantly allows the group to stay on the farm, and his daughter, Maggie, falls in love with Glenn. But then Glenn discovers that Herschel is actually keeping walkers in the barn. Herschel believes that the walkers aren't actually dead and that they're just sick people who can be cured. Shane, in a fit of rage, proves to Herschel that he's wrong and slaughters all the walkers in the barn, most of whom were their family and friends. And then it's revealed that Sophia has been a walker in the barn the whole time. The whole time? The, the whole time? You would, the whole time? The group has been searching for Sophia for weeks, and it turns out that Otis, before shooting Carl must have found Sophia as a walker and put her in the barn. And he couldn't share that information with the group because Shane killed him before Otis found out that they were missing a little girl. Following this heartbreak, Herschel goes to a bar followed by Glenn and Rick. Then they meet a group of unfriendlies. The two men are part of a bigger group, but Rick tells them that there is not enough food at their farm, and it all leads to this. But the gunfire drew the attention of other members of the bad guys group. There's a shootout that attracts the dead and the bad guys flee, except for one guy, Randall, who gets injured. So Rick brings Randall back to the farm. Oh, and I should mention that Lori has found out that she's pregnant, but doesn't know if the baby belongs to Rick or Shane. You are not. <laughs> Lori tries to take some pills that would abort her pregnancy, but she throws up. Rick confronts Lori, and she confesses that she and Shane were together while she thought Rick was dead. Rick forgives Lori, and they decide to keep the baby together. Shane is furious that Rick brought Randall back to the farm and says that he should have left him there to die. Rick and Shane agree that Randall is too dangerous to let him join the group, but while Shane says they should kill him, Rick thinks that it'd be better just to drive Randall out far from the farm and then cut him loose, like a dog. But then Randall reveals that he knew Maggie in high school, and he knows where the farm is, so they can't leave Randall alive, but Rick still wants to think about it. This in 
enrages Shane and he says that they just need to kill him. And then everything bubbles to the surface. Shane says that he doesn't think that Rick can keep Lori and Carl safe and they get in a huge fist fight. They both walk away from the fight and bring Randall back to the farm. The group's moral compass, Dale, is appalled when the group votes to kill Randall. Rick, Shane, and Daryl take Randall to the barn to execute him, but when Carl walks in, he tells his dad to do it. And then Rick can't bring himself to. So shortly after the vote, Dale walks back to his camper and he is attacked by a walker. His death inspires Rick to pull the group back together. The group decides to let Randall live, so Shane kills him anyways and then lies to the group and says that he escaped. He then lures Rick into the woods to kill him, but Rick gets the upper hand and kills Shane. Shane then resurrects as a walker, and the gunfire from Rick and Shane's altercation draws a large group of walkers to the farm and it is overrun. Andrea is separated from the group and is saved by the katana-wielding, walker-taming, badass Michonne. Rick and the survivors regroup away from the farm and he reveals to everybody that they are all infected. We're all infected. A few hard months pass during the winter until the group finds a prison and makes it their new home. Meanwhile, Andrea and Michonne are found by Merle and a group run by a man called the Governor. And Merle now has this cool knife hand. And let me see what you have! I'm No! The survivors then encounter prisoners who've been living in the prison since the outbreak. Two of them are good guys looking for trouble. Rick kills another guy who is looking for trouble. And then the other one, like, f runs away and then lets walkers into the prison, killing T-Dog. And while running from the walkers, Lori goes into labor and Maggie has to perform an emergency C-section. The baby is born, but Lori dies, and Carl has to put her down so she doesn't come back as a zombie. Rick is distraught, even though he and Lori hadn't been on good terms for a while, and he goes a little bit crazy. No! No! Andrea and Michonne are at the governor's base, a sectioned off downtown area called Woodbury. Michonne sees the governor for who he really is, like a really bad, crazy dude. He puts on the face of a squeaky clean politician for the citizens of Woodbury, but he's actually a murderer and a thief, and like I said, super creepy. Michonne tells Andrea not to trust the governor, but Andrea doesn't want to hear it and thinks that the governor is a good guy. Michonne leaves Woodbury and the governor sends Merle to bring her back. Maggie and Glenn go out on a run for baby formula when they run into Merle. Merle takes Glenn and Maggie hostage and they're tortured back at Woodbury while Michonne witnesses the whole thing. So then Michonne goes to the prison and tells the group about Merle being alive and torturing Glenn and Maggie. So the group goes to rescue them, but now Daryl is the one who's captured and he reunites with his brother. The governor pits them against each other in a death match, but Rick and the gang storm back in and save Daryl and Merle. The governor launches a counterattack on the prison and kills one of the prisoners named Axel. Then Tyrese and his sister Sasha come to the prison looking for shelter. Rick is about to let them in when he sees a vision of Lori that has been haunting him since her death. So they leave, end up at Woodbury, but Tyrese and Sasha see through the governor almost instantly. Rick, Michonne, and Carl go on a run back to their hometown in search of weapons to help fight the impending war with the governor. There they encounter Morgan, whose kid has died, and now he's a little bit insane. Rick is able to break through Morgan's haze and get him to remember who he is. He doesn't go back to the prison with Rick, but he does give the group a lot of guns to help fight their war. Andrea steps in and tries to play mediator between Rick and the governor. But those negotiations go nowhere. The negotiations were short. Andrea begins to see the governor for who he really is, and she attempts to go to the prison, but she's captured and locked away. Merle tries to ambush the governor, but he's overrun by bad guys and is killed. And then we get one of the saddest scenes in the entire series when Daryl finds his brother turned into a walker. The governor attacks the prison, but the group kicks him right in the woodberries and sends him running back home. The governor doesn't respond well to his people retreating, and he mows them all down. Rick, Daryl, and Michonne go back to Woodbury to finish the fight, and they find that Andrea has been bitten. So they find their peace, and Michonne puts Andrea down. The surviving citizens of Woodbury join join Rick's group at the prison. The governor is on his own for a long time. He comes across some survivors that take him in. One of those characters is called Tara. The governor actually makes you start to like him as a character, and then he reminds you just how evil of a son of a bitch he is. He gets a tank, forms a new group of lackeys, and then rolls up to the prison for round two. Now during this time, an illness has hit the prison and some people die. So Carol kills some sick people, hoping to stop the spread of the virus, but one of those people was Tyrese's love interest, Karen. When Tyrese finds her dead, he snaps. You a cop? You find out who did this and you bring them to me, you understand? You bring them to me! Rick finds out it was Carol and banishes her from the prison. When the governor rolls up, he reveals that he has Michonne and Herschel as hostages. He tells Rick and everyone else that they need to leave or he'll kill Michonne and Herschel. Rick refuses and says the governor and his people can stay, but the governor doesn't buy it and he cuts off Herschel's head. Liar. A massive battle breaks out, Michonne then kills the governor, and the prison is destroyed. The main group is separated and don't meet up again until arriving at Terminus. We came here for sanctuary. That what you here for? Yes. Rick, Carl, and Michonne think that Judith is dead, but it turns out that Tyrese has her, and he also runs into Carol, who saw the smoke from the war at the prison. Glenn and Tara meet up with Eugene, Abraham, and Rosita. Now, Eugene claims that he is a scientist who knows how to end the walkers and restore the world, if he can be brought to D.C. Daryl and Beth escape together, but she's kidnapped by another group, so Daryl links up with a group of bad guys who have a run-in with Rick, and let's just say it doesn't go well for the bad guys. What the hell are you gonna do now, sport? Oh! 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 
you. And then we get this really great moment where Rick tells Daryl, You're my brother. Everyone heads for a sanctuary called Terminus, but they're trapped in a train car. Turns out the Terminus was too good to be true, and it is not a sanctuary. Instead, these people are cannibals. But Rick isn't phased. He only says, They're with the wrong people. So Carol bazookas Terminus and helps Rick and the group escape, and they're all reunited. And for Rick and Tyrese, I guess Carol killing those innocent people is all water under the bridge. The group kills the cannibals, escapes Terminus, and meets Father Gabriel. They hold up at his church, and the cannibals track them down. Besides... I already made you a promise. No! The group then leaves for Atlanta and attempts to rescue Maggie's sister Beth, but she's killed in the process. And Eugene reveals that he was actually lying about being able to save the world. I don't know how to stop it. I'm a scientist. The group is then on the road for a while. Tyrese gets bit by a walker and it's a huge blow to the group. During a harrowing night in a barn, holding back walkers in a storm, Rick says the best line of the show. That we are the walking dead. He said it! He said it! Then they meet Aaron, who takes them to a place called Alexandria. This is an enclosed neighborhood with walls that went up in the early days of the outbreak, so the people of Alexandria are not used to fighting walkers. Rick and the group have trouble acclimating to their new way of life, and as Rick predicts, Luck runs out. Alexandria faces challenges as Rick becomes their leader. See, he's a wartime consigliere. Not only does Rick have to deal with an abusive husband within the walls of Alexandria and a band of murderous survivors called the Wolves, but there's also a giant herd of incoming walkers. Morgan has also rejoined the group and has gone full Donatello. <laughs> My people have guns. Much like Smokey, he's become a pacifist. And eventually, things get pretty good. Alexandria is thriving. Rick and Michonne fall in love, but then comes Negan. I'm Negan. You see, the survivors meet a nice new group called Hilltop, who have to pay a tribute to some guy named Negan. So Rick's group agrees to take out Negan in exchange for establishing fair trade with Alexandria. Negan runs a group called the Saviors, who raid groups of survivors and threaten to do it again if they don't provide a regular offering of food and supplies. Your property now belongs to Negan. Now Rick gets a little big for them tight britches of his and he thinks that he's going to take out Negan no problem when he takes out a mere satellite post with only some of Negan's vast army of saviors. So the saviors capture the survivors and bring them to Negan. Negan beats Abraham to death with his barbed wire wrapped baseball bat which he calls Lucille which later we learned was named after his late wife. After killing Abraham, Daryl jumps up and punches Negan so in retaliation he kills Glenn. Back to it. But Rick is still defiant, so Negan grabs Rick and Carl and tells Rick that he's going to have him chop off his son's arm. Rick sobs and snob bubbles and all that stuff, and then Negan stops right before he swings his axe. And just like that, Rick Grimes is broken. For now. After months of serving Negan and refusing to challenge him, Rick finally has enough when he realizes that Negan will eventually take everything they have. Rick joins Maggie, who has been wanting to go to war with Negan after he killed Glenn. Oh, and also she's pregnant with Glenn's baby. I'm pregnant. Alexandria and Hilltop join with another group called the Kingdom, led by King Ezekiel who I might add has a pet tiger. Also, somewhere in here, Carol starts feeling bad about killing people and became a pacifist. Eugene is taken by Negan because he knows how to make bullets from scratch. Negan learns this when Rosita has Eugene make her a bullet so she can assassinate Negan. What is this? This little bad boy made from scratch? During the war, Negan and Carl develop a bit of a love-hate relationship. You see, Negan has a certain level of respect for Carl, and Negan is, like, broken when he learns that Carl was bitten by a walker and passed away. So, it's Negan's relationship with Carl that ultimately gives Rick the upper hand in his final showdown with Negan. As Negan is about to strike Rick down, Rick asks Negan to give him 10 seconds to tell him why they can resolve the war and live in peace. Rick explains how Carl believed that he could resolve their differences, and we see Negan's eyes get teary and his bat begins to lower, and then, boom, Rick slits Negan's throat and ends the war. Rick then spares Negan's life by asking a doctor from his group to save him, and Maggie is not happy. It's not over till he's dead! 18 months later, Negan is locked up at Alexandria. Maggie is running Hilltop after its original leader, Gregory, betrayed the group during the war and tried to have Maggie killed, so Maggie hanged him. Dude, Maggie's becoming cold. Well, can you blame her? <laughs> Rick is determined to incorporate the saviors into their way of life and rid them of their villainous ways. But not every savior is interested in letting go of the war, nor is every member of the good guy groups, Alexandria, Hilltop, the Kingdom, and Oceanside. Maggie and many others want Negan dead. His name was Glenn. So now you finally come for revenge? Justice. 
When Rick learns that Maggie is headed to Alexandria to kill Negan, Daryl offers to take Rick back to Alexandria to stop her, but Daryl is in on this assassination attempt, so he takes Rick far away. Once Rick realizes what Daryl is doing, they get in a fight and fall in a hole. After arguing out their differences, they escape the pit and split up. Rick leads an incoming herd of walkers away from the camp, but his horse bucks, throwing him into a cement block with a piece of rebar sticking out. Rick pulls himself off the rebar and gets back on his horse. He's losing a lot of blood, and he begins to have dreams about his life in the apocalypse, and he's revisited by characters who have died prior in the show, such as Shane, Herschel, and Sasha. What about his wife and son? Nope. That's weird. Yeah. So, when Rick realizes that he has no choice, he leads the walkers to their new bridge and blows it up. I found him. After this, Rick is found by the leader of a group called the Scavengers. Long story short, the group is led by this woman named Anne, and her scavenger group switched sides like three different times in the war with Negan. And apparently, Anne is actually part of a group called the Civic Republic Military. They show up in a helicopter and take Rick off to another spinoff show that's coming sometime soon. Hard to keep track. Then there's a six-year time jump. Negan is still locked away and has developed a relationship with Judith, who comes to talk to him through the prison cell window. She asks him questions about the war and her brother. Judith now carries Rick's python pistol, and she also wears Carl's hat, which was originally Rick's hat. Daryl has spent years searching for Rick, holding out hope that he's still alive, or at least hoping to find his body and get closure. And then, after this six-year period of peace, we meet the Whisperers, a group of survivors who wear skin masks of the dead so they can lead hordes of walkers and use them as a weapon. And they whisper to one another to communicate without drawing the attention of the walkers. The leader of the Whispers is a woman named Alpha, and her muscle is this big old guy named Beta. Alpha's daughter Lydia joins the hilltop after defecting from the Whispers. Then there's a war with the Whispers where several major characters die, like Tara and Enid. Oh, and did I mention Michonne and Rick now have a kid? His name is RJ, aka Rick Jr. He's super cute and has like five lines over three seasons. Anyways, Carol releases Negan from prison so that he can infiltrate the Whispers and kill Alpha. In exchange, Carol says that Negan will have his freedom at a home at Alexandria. Negan kills Alpha, meaning that he is now the Alpha. If I'm the Alpha, but why is someone who was most definitely not the Alpha holding the badass shotgun? When the Whisperers capture Daryl, Negan is presented with the opportunity to kill him, but to prove that he can be trusted and that he wants to join the survivors, he spares his life. You should probably shoot me. Don't threaten me with a good time. So wait, what did Maggie do in the war? Well, she and her son Herschel are off with an unmanned group learning how to better build communities. What, like, like Apocalypse Training Camp? More like, didn't want to be in the show anymore camp. I should also mention that Michonne randomly left the show as well so she could go be in Wakanda forever. I mean, to search for Rick. When she's at Oceanside, she gets on a boat and finds an old iPhone with the drawing of herself and Judith carved into it, as well as Rick's old boots. So, she leaves both her kids with Daryl and goes off to look for Rick. Michonne is going to return in the Rick spinoff series, but Maggie actually returned for the final season of the show. We see Herschel and Negan meet for the first time. My mom told me a bad man killed my dad. After what Negan took from Maggie with killing Glenn right before her eyes, she understandably can never forgive him, and so she says as much. I can't forgive you. But she's grateful that Negan saved her son's life, so she's no longer trying to kill him. I don't want to hurt like that, and I don't want my son to see that anybody has that kind of hold over me. After finishing the war with the Whispers, we are introduced to the Commonwealth, a large city with tall walls that is led by a woman named Pamela. The Commonwealth is also part of a larger network of sanctuaries. Pamela is revealed to be corrupt, twisted, evil, murderous politician that the survivors have to face. And to make things worse, the walkers are getting smarter. Some of them now know how to pick things up and climb. They fly now? They fly now! The series ends with the survivors defeating Pamela and her tyrannical reign. We see Daryl go out on his own, setting up his new spinoff series. And the final scene features the man himself, Rick Grimes, in a triumphant return, teasing his brand new spinoff series as well. We're the ones who live. And speaking of spinoff series, Dead City features the unlikely team up of Maggie and Negan that's going to be coming soon, and we are going to be breaking down each episode right here on the channel, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss it. Did we leave anything out that we should have mentioned? Any characters we should have mentioned? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.